We now have two U.S. mayors who are going to speak to you in order. And the first one is the Honorable Bob Dixon, mayor of Greensburg, Kansas. In 2007, Greensburg, Kansas was virtually leveled by a massive tornado, and we actually have seen that. He gave the talk here with, with the pictures, and you have seen all of that. And with expert advisement, they made a master sustainability plan that includes 100% renewable electricity, which has already been achieved. I proudly present to you the Honorable Bob Dixon. Okay. Never give up, never lose hope. Thank you. <laughs> the reason I lead into that, May the 4th, 2007, our tree line community on the plains of western Kansas, a small rural community, our lives changed in a blink of an eye. We went from this to this. 95% of the community was totally leveled to rubble by an EF-5 tornado with sustained winds of 205 miles an hour. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rush this a little because I want to get to the real nuts and bolts of this. In the midst of losing 11 lives and two of my very close neighbors across the street, we lost everything. In a matter of minutes, we were all homeless. So it didn't matter our social economic status in the community. The true sustainable green thing we had in life was each other and our relationships with each other. And this is what we, this is all about for me. is how we treat each other and how we live our lives to make this a better productive world for all of us. We as a community... We as a community felt we were, as our vision statement says, blessed with a tremendous and unique opportunity to create a strong community devoted to family fostering businesses. And the key is the last sentence, working together for future generations. That's what it's about, ladies and gentlemen. Everything we've talked about all day, there's been great information. I'm not going to bore you with a lot of technical stuff. I'm going to tell you social issues and things we have in our own community where we can make a difference. We live in the most exciting time in history right now because we can make a difference. And you all are doing that. And I encourage that and keep that up. When I first heard afterwards in our planning processes under the big tent, we had no buildings in town to meet. FEMA put us up a big tent. We had five and 600 people that show up for community meetings. And right off the bat, they started talking about green and sustainable. And I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was born and raised on a farm 17 miles from town. We did everything sustainable. We were green. All I could think about was 1968, powder blue bell-bottom pants, tie-dyed shirt, big white belt buckle, hair down to hair, maybe on mind-altering chemicals, hugging a tree. The reason I say that is we've had a misconception and we've made political football out of being sustainable and green and being good stewards of our resources. So what we need to do in this process of planning and moving boldly into the future is we had to involve all the stakeholders in these community meetings. It was a ground-up process. We didn't rely on the governor's office or, the, or FEMA or any of that to drive our thought process. And what we, how we package this in our mind, and especially me, is it's about my ancestors, your ancestors, the original green people. My ancestors, the first thing they did when they settled on the plains or anywhere in the Midwest was they drilled a water well that they put up a windmill to use the wind to pump life-sustaining water for them and their livestock and their gardens. Then they moved that through their cooling house that they built, geothermal, to cool the milk and eggs. And at the same time, they dug a root cellar to put their crops for the summer in for the winter, geothermal, below the ground. We pumped the water into a tower and we heated it with the solar heat and took a hot shower at night. Now, I contend, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what we're trying to do today. 
You saw all kinds of buildings today and all kinds of things you're going to see later and you're going to talk about. The history and heritage is there. It's that we have the modern technology and the fortitude to make this happen. And we need to make it happen. So in the midst of all this, the most important thing for us was to discuss the issues. It's the most important thing for you and your communities. Who are you? What's your values? What's the character of your community? You can't have a visioning process if you don't know who you are. That includes your private life, your corporate life, your municipal life. Who are you? you got to answer that question before you can move forward. And so those are the things we addressed under the big tent. What do we want our town and our region to look like 50 or 100 years from now? When you're knee deep or this deep in rubble, it's pretty easy to let the, the realities of today cloud your vision of a brighter tomorrow. Yes, crisis management is very important in every one of our communities, but every true leader in a community, and that includes all your citizens, people in Greensburg said, well, I didn't do too much. I'm not really serving on too many committees. I said, number one, did you attend all the community meetings? Yes. I said, did you rebuild a home? And they said, yes. And I said, that's leadership. It had been easy to pack your bags and leave. It's a commitment to community and it's a commitment to each other. It's moving from crisis management to visionary management. Identify what you can change in the short term and you've done that today and we're continuing to do that. But make sure you celebrate successes. Do not let suboptimal people cloud your vision of a brighter tomorrow. You have to decide, do you want to be a surviving community, barely getting by, or do you want to be a thriving community? It matters not whether it's San Francisco, or it's New York City, or it's Greensburg, Kansas. It's a community. And you have, to, you have to deal with it that way. My next slide just goes into the triple bottom line that we talked about earlier. I won't go into a lot of detail there, but for, for us, it, it was just simply when you bring business and environment and people together, that's sustainability. It's long-term sustainability of how do we operate our community that's a better place to live and work for all of us. And only your community can answer that. I can't answer that for your community. You have to decide that. Also at this time, we were able to address systematic problems that existed for decades in the community and be able to say, what are we going to change? Where are we at today? In this living laboratory of a small community on the plains of western Kansas, we knew we had to have a new water tower. That's the beacon of hope that we need to keep offering to each other, that as people traveling the highway and our community members coming back to the community from living with neighbors and friends and in other towns coming cleaning up their rubble, they said, yes, we're coming back. We got a water tower and we're getting our electrical distribution system back. Yes, this town is building back. So you have to lead by example and you have to have some action. Vision without action is merely a dream. Merely a dream. And if you just have action without a vision, you're just passing time. So if we take action with true vision, we can change the world. Six, six months after the tornado, the city council passed a resolution that all uh, municipal buildings would be uh, achieve lead platinum status. The first lead platinum building in the state of Kansas and in Greensburg was private enterprise. It wasn't a municipal building. It was the new arts center. Wind turbine, green roof, uh, photovoltaic on the roof. I, I, real quick, green roof. I just love this. My ancestors lived in green roofed homes. <laughs> they were called sod houses on the prairies of western Kansas. Folks, 
let's not forget where we came from because that's going to tell where we're headed. Don't lose track of your values and the core things that are important. So anyway, just go on with, with uh, where we're at today. We, we had put in all LED street lights that cut our consumption by 70%, which really helps our city budgets, mayors. We have business, uh, we needed to provide opportunities for business. And I just real quick, you saw a lot of this talk of overhangs, facing south, getting that solar in. I don't mean to be flippant, but it reminded me of my grandfather's chicken coop. <laughs> because he knew that in the winter, if he got more sun in there, the hens laid more eggs. The cows gave more milk. There's a reason why architects continue to design this way. It's nothing new. Let's make sure that we keep implementing what works in your microclimate. Just some pictures of downtown Main Street. By the way, the new city hall has 75,000 bricks reclaimed from the rubble. The wood on the awning reclaimed from the rubble. Brand new school, limestone native to our region. We're already adding on to the school because we've outgrown kindergarten through fourth grade and we need more classrooms. That is the future of our country, is the end. This movement of being good stewards of the resources. New hospital, courthouse. I'm going to focus just a touch bit and I'll get on with this, Donald. I know we're, we're, we've got some very distinguished speakers coming up. The greenest building out there is the one that's already built because the resources have already been used. Now, how do we take care of that and make that more efficient? This is a rehab county courthouse that's lead gold. There's 32 geothermal wells there. By the way, the school has 96 geothermal wells and its own wind turbine. The hospital has geothermal wells and its own wind turbine and solar PV. We are a living laboratory. Come visit. I'll waive the entry fee when you come in if you say, you know, no. <laughs> Private enterprise bought into the John Deere dealership, built Lee Platinum. They also diversified in, into the wind energy business. They are the uh, small and medium sized uh, distributors for 35 Western states and six Canadian provinces headquartered out of Greensburg, Kansas. So it is the future. Through NREL, they did some studies, and we found out that uh, we have one of the better areas right in our region with the upflow from Oklahoma. It's not because they're windy down there. It's just because we get a good upflow. That's a joke. Um, <laughs> NREL says, let's put in a community wind farm. Is there, how can we do it? Through public-private partnerships, we we're able to. We generate 12 and a half megawatts. Our peak loads four and a half megawatts. The rest goes on the grid, and is is shared by uh, 32 other cities in our power pool that uh, can say part of their portfolio comes from the wind. Now, in the midst of all this, I'm going to tie it all together. Not only do we live in the most exciting time in history, we're called right now to be humble public servants with a vision and a commitment to a brighter tomorrow. And you all have that. In the midst of being sustainable and green and 100% renewable, which we are from the wind, in all of our electrical generation, we're our own utility. There's just one question that we need to answer. And this is the only thing for me that makes it all happen, is do we want to leave the world a better place for them?